Okay. Okay. So welcome, Pranshu. Welcome to our Know Your Trainer series, right? And thanks a lot for your time. So uh, as a as an uh, I would say part of the series, what we are trying to do is we are trying to introduce our trainers to the to the participant, right? So <clears throat> we we will ask, we will have maybe in a few conversation, right? We I I don't want to make it in a interview or a, maybe in a, a Q and A, right? But this is more of an, a very informal conversation, right? So where you can talk about yourself, right? Your training, your upcoming session. right so that people will get to know about you as an as an trainer more are you okay sure. uh, thank you yeah sanjay thank you first of all thank you for having me here and i would be glad to you know uh, answer your questions and uh, maybe it could help uh, the prospective aspirants the audience uh, in the long run so yeah. we're looking forward to it sure so let, let's start with a basic uh, right maybe that the very first question generally we ask when we whenever we go to all these event conferences right or maybe to the training session right may, do you mind maybe talking about yourself your professional experience right what do you do where do you work right about your training thing sure uh, so i have got uh, almost a decade and a half of experience uh, in the software industry or around software industry and uh, in a child world i would say uh, almost half of that so little more than 7 years uh, being in a child world and uh, my experience you know uh, started from a startup so it helped me you know grow into say leadership uh, position quite uh, fast so i had uh, experienced uh, kind of you know uh, talking to end customers or even pitching your product or, or selling uh, or you know uh, out selling or up upselling your product so it really helped me in uh, understanding that what really matters uh, at the end of the day is money right which we i used to call as business value so uh, it doesn't matter to the end customer what you are practicing or what kind of uh, you know methodologies are you using uh, behind the curtain what matters to them if you are uh, if you are solving their problem right if you are de delivering on their needs and on time with quality right so that that is more important and uh, having coming from that i have experienced uh, you know large corporations uh, also so the basic difference that i have observed uh, in the working of two is uh, while decision making is you know uh, quite you can say immediate uh, actions are quicker in a startup they are obviously riskier right but on the other hand uh, in in an enterprise in a in a large enterprise they are more you can say tractable right uh, more compliant but obviously slower so uh, i can say that this experience has given me you can say a, a t uh, shape you know or experience or length and breadth i know that okay what technologically uh, it uh, matters how it matters and what should be uh, what should be look out for as well as what the business demands and what they look out for as an outcome right so it has really helped me in uh, you know training the people in the right way it's not just focusing on say mechanical aspects but also uh the reasoning behind it the value they should be looking out for great great wonderful and it's good, really good to know that you have worked from an a startup uh, in a startup as well as in a large enterprise and that will be really helpful to your participant right so during the session you can actually share your experience or maybe the examples which are more applicable to in a startup as well as to in a, a large enterprise right so that that is really good good Oops. Yeah. So and I I saw that you have an uh, upcoming session right. There is a free meet a free master class right on the sprint planning and there is an a in a maybe in a four or six hour paid session also coming up, right? Uh, so yeah, right. Yeah. what 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 it is all about? Do you want to give an a brief overview about those session? What it is right? What people can expect sure. from it? Yeah, sure, sure. So uh, the topic first of all the reason why i choose uh, the step topic is uh, because i think in the world of scrum uh, where we have uh, you know several events to inspect and adapt this, this sprint planning is a first one uh, where we have the opportunity to inspect and adapt right and uh, it is although 
throughout the cycle or throughout the sprints or the uh, you know setup of a scrum uh, the team is working on they need to exhibit the value five values of uh, you know uh, commitment courage focus openness and respect but specifically this event i believe i strongly believe that uh, the team members need to show all the values at the same time they need to be focused on the sprint goal right uh, align with the land with the product goal they should be uh, pretty much committed uh, towards that while being courageous enough to pull the items they can really do right so if there is some uh, you know uh, they can see something that could be troublesome right they might have not done something before this is the first time they should be courageous enough to speak about it right and at the same time uh, obviously when they are courageous they are opening up they are showing uh, the openness right bringing in the transparency and while doing all this they should be respectful they should be respectful towards the product owner they should be respectful towards the business needs right why the that sprint goal is being suggested right so that's the reason uh, for me choosing this topic and i believe i strongly believe that uh, the aspirants uh, no matter from which level of uh, experience they will be joining they will be getting some takeaways so if you are a say uh, you know very new uh, to a scrum master uh, profile it will help you because we will be covering the conceptual uh, things and if you have been here uh, in that role say from say 3 to 5 years it will still help you because you will be covering industry best practices right how can you use technology ai uh, within that uh, event to make it more impactful we will be uh, using you know the common pitfalls disruptions uh, that you might have also seen in your experience as well as if you have been in this game say from a long time since 7 8 years then also it will help because uh, you will certainly get something to you know uh, up your game so how to link or understand uh, whatever sprint goals uh, your team is achieving to the bigger picture right what are the okrs uh, maybe we in evidence uh, based management right so that could also help great great I, i think it's really fantastic that the way you actually related all five scrum values within a the, the the sprint planning event right that's fantastic and and uh, i i i'm i'm quite hopeful that people and the participants are going to learn a lot from you and your experience right but so i would like to ask maybe uh, about your experience attending or maybe maybe participating in an sprint planning right how how was it right or what challenges do you see generally the 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 scrum practitioner face in a sprint planning session okay so uh, what have i have observed uh, you know personally as well as uh, overseeing uh, other scrum masters that usually uh, what they face is uh, i mean lack of knowledge uh, or lack of you can say i would say not knowing right so not knowing what to do uh, if something happens so say if uh, the sprint goal seem too aspirational right too ambitious uh, the team members are not able to align what to do in that case right so that is one thing then i would say that domain bias is usually happen so if people uh, if a person is coming you know in a scrum master position is coming from say business background they tend to bias towards you know achieving uh, uh, what is functionally required without uh, giving more uh, say importance to what goes on beyond uh, you know behind that uh, from the technological aspect so i i still remember one example where uh, there was a uh, story or a requirement of a, a label change you know a text uh, on on a web page and uh, the scrum master having a business background was uh, uh, like that okay why you, do you need this much effort this is just a label change uh, without considering the effort that that uh, that, uh, that label change is not uh, technically just a uh, say a few minutes job it can impact and it would certainly impact multiple aspects multiple pages multiple screen and they need to test that and it will require time right so this is the domain bias same goes for the technical uh, people as well so people coming from the technical background tend to get biased or get too much involved in the technical uh, aspects of uh, you know things so they should refrain from uh, that third i would say uh, is a challenge uh, uh, trying too many things frequently so 
uh, have met some uh, you know over enthusiastic scrum masters i would say who try too many things you know uh, if they try one thing for a sprint if it doesn't work or works slightly they try to change it then try to something else so even if something works they fail to acknowledge or recognize that what exactly worked right mm-hmm. so that is something also uh, quite challenging and to look out for mm-hmm. and one more aspect i have seen uh, and this uh, you know i would i have to admit that i also did uh, for some time is during the sprint planning sometimes uh, we try to you know prepare for the justification of failure instead of say trying to prepare for some experimentation for success you get my point so yeah from yeah. from the even they try to you know document everything and say do a lengthy you know cumbersome uh, absolute way uh, capacity planning and all those things just to be ready with the justification if uh, you know uh, something fails or someone comes and asks questions Oh, yeah. so that is also a lot of very 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 to very and very, very practical experience i would say that that's really interesting right i i have heard so many time people just talking from their books right without actually knowing or even experiencing it themselves but you, the way you have just said i think it shows that you ha- you have actually been part of it you have experienced it yourself wonderful good so that the next thing i would like to ask from an from a participant perspective eh? so assuming i am a student right i would like to attend your session is there any prerequisite or do i have to prepare something i have to read something before coming to your session or can i come just hey i, I don't know much about this thing called as an agile and scrum but i would like to learn about it uh i would say yeah you can for for sure there is no as such prerequisite but obviously if you are in the field even from say a developer part you you are a part of a team who uh, you know is following scrum you can be benefited from this training mm-hmm. and obviously if you have been in the role of scrum master it can help you a lot right so even if you are a new one uh, because we will be starting from scratch right from the book from the conceptual things uh, so it will uh, certainly help you uh, and uh, in addition to that if uh, you are really intrigued you are really interested uh, i would strongly suggest to go to scrum.org or just google for scrum guide and read it at least once right yeah yeah i think that, that that's fair enough i think to have and maybe i and i i know that the, the scrum guide you just mentioned maybe just 14 15 pages not a big uh, book as such right so people can spend maybe a half an hour an hour to read it right to understand it to get in a better understanding before coming to the session which is fair good i think this is good enough but before we close i would like to ask you about you, you about yourself as an a trainer right so you may you may have trained so many people right so what what are you doing to keep evolving yourself as an a trainer or maybe t- keep improving yourself as an a trainer right uh, that's that's a really good question so uh, i would say see from the training aspect i have uh, trained about uh, you know Uh, 30 odd people it's not a long journey uh, yet for me uh, though i'm looking for one and uh, to answer your second question i think uh, in order to keep myself uh, you know uh, recent or relevant i would say uh, i keep kind of connecting the dots so uh, by that what what i mean is that if i've learned scrum right uh, learn about what complements scrum right uh, how or where we can use technology as i mentioned you know how you can use ai uh, now that you have done that uh, try to think about or learn about how it uh, you know turns out beyond team so learn about okrs right how business goal or how uh, what is that on in planning how how that works right i learn about evidence uh, based management uh, now that you have learned that uh, obviously because these questions keep coming to your mind uh now by the time if you have learned abm you will know very clearly that what is the difference between outcomes and outputs right what is more important and both are important why it is right try to then quantify it and keep connecting dots now that you have learned you have learned that try to go even beyond that so if there is an objective or business objective or business goal is there why it is there right 
so you will get answers that okay this is because uh, the organization is following a particular strategy okay then what is the strategy right then you may learn that okay why the organization is following the strategy okay they may might be uh, you know in the say cost leadership game right or, or maybe uh, trying differentiator because of the market or because of the competition right so i would say having curious mind and uh, keep digging for information uh, helps you you know keep uh, up the game and uh, i always suggest that retain what makes sense for you right uh, what is relevant to you and strive to learn more what interests you and apply uh, whatever you know apply and test whatever intrigues you yeah yeah fair enough good so what one common thing i have heard from all the trainers is they they keep learning they are not stopping right it doesn't mean that hey i i know about scrum now so i don't have to learn anything i don't have to evolve myself no they still keep learning maybe by reading books right by attending conference events right or maybe obviously by experimenting in themselves that that's great that's good to know okay yeah, that's it. I, yeah wonderful any 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 last comment you have for your participant or maybe about your course you want to share anything you know? uh i would say if you are really uh, you know seeking true knowledge uh, then most welcome right because uh, a training could be a one time thing but learning never stops as we just discussed right so uh, i could recommend also some books or some websites to you know uh, go about so scrum guide as i suggested that should be your first step if you are entering this world or are in this world because i have come across uh, quite few scrum masters who have been there in the world but uh, haven't heard about scrum guide or uh, haven't read that you know thoroughly then uh, i would strongly suggest a book uh, fixing your scrum uh, by ryan ripley and todd miller that uh, could really help and uh, if you are in this journey uh, from say 2 3 years i would strongly suggest a book from mike con uh what is agile estimating and planning that could really help and if you are in this game and want to really you know uh, take this career path seriously uh surely read uh, the book uh, coaching agile teams by lisa atkins that really helps and, and as usual uh keep uh, go browsing the learning paths uh, you know from scrum.org they have got exhaustive content for everything uh so it could help you even you know uh, from getting the misleading information around uh, internet or google from other sources good thank thanks a lot pranchu thank for sharing all that details all right and thanks a lot for your time also i hope that uh, people uh, participant who are interested in at- attending your session or maybe any others agile or scrum training will get some value out of this conversation thank I strong, thanks i strongly hope so thank you thank thanks you, a lot for it Thank you.